Hello and welcome, my fellow scientist. I am Dr. SCP Comics. Me personally and all Foundation personnel are very happy that you have joined our visual journey into the SCP universe. If you like what you see, we will be very grateful if you don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's begin. SCP-106 is to be contained in a sealed container, comprised of lead-lined steel. The container will be sealed within 40 layers of identical material, each layer separated by no less than 36 cm of empty space. Support struts between layers are to be randomly spaced. Container is to remain suspended no less than 60 cm from any surface by ELO IID electromagnetic supports. Secondary containment area is to be comprised of 16 spherical cells, each filled with various fluids and a random assembly of surfaces and supports. Secondary containment is to be fitted with light systems capable of flooding the entire assembly with no less than 80,000 lumens of light instantly, with no direct human involvement. Both containment areas are to remain under 24-hour surveillance. Any corrosion observed on any containment cell surfaces, staff members or other site locations within 200 meters of SCP-106 are to be reported to site security immediately. Any objects or personnel lost to SCP-106 are to be deemed missing or KIA. No recovery attempts are to be made under any circumstances. SCP-106 appears to be an elderly humanoid with a general appearance of advanced decomposition. This appearance may vary, but the rotting quality is observed in all forms. SCP-106 is not exceptionally agile and will remain motionless for days at a time waiting for prey. SCP-106 is also capable of scaling any vertical surface and can remain suspended upside down indefinitely. When attacking, SCP-106 will attempt to incapacitate prey by damaging major organs, muscle groups, or tendons, then pull disabled prey into its pocket dimension. SCP-106 appears to prefer human prey items in the 10 to 25 years of age bracket. SCP-106 causes a corrosion effect in all solid matter it touches, engaging a physical breakdown in materials several seconds after contact. This is observed as rusting, rotting, and cracking of materials, and the creation of a black mucus-like substance similar to the material coating SCP-106. This effect is particularly detrimental to living tissues, and is assumed to be a pre-digestion action. Corrosion continues for 6 hours after contact, after which the effect appears to burn out. SCP-106 is capable of passing through solid matter, leaving behind a large patch of its corrosive mucus. SCP-106 is able to vanish inside solid matter, entering what is assumed to be a form of pocket dimension. SCP-106 is then able to exit this dimension from any point connected to the initial entry point. Examples: Entering the inner wall of a room and exiting the outer wall entering a wall and exiting from the ceiling. It is unknown if this is the point of origin for SCP-106 or a simple layer created by SCP-106. Limited observation of this pocket dimension has shown it to be comprised mostly of holes and rooms with entry. This activity can continue for days, with some subjected individuals being released for the express purpose of haunting, recapture, or Due to the exceedingly difficult to contain nature of SCP-106, SCP is to be reviewed every three months or during a post-breach incident. Physical restraints are impossible, and direct physical damage appears to have no effect on SCP-106. Current SCP, as of revolves around basic observation and immediate response. Previous, more proactive special containment procedures have been recalled due to the events of breaches. 
SCP-106 appears to go through long periods of dormancy, in which it will remain completely motionless for up to three months. The cause for this is unknown, however, it has been shown that this appears to be used as a lulling tactic. SCP-106 will emerge from this state in a very agitated state and will attack and abduct staff and cause gross damage to its containment cell and the site at large. The inner dimension accessed by SCP-106 appears to be only accessible by SCP-106. Recording and transmission devices have been shown to still operate inside this dimension, though recordings and transmissions are very degraded. It appears that SCP-106 will play with captured prey and appears to have full control of time, space and perception inside this dimension. In the event of a breach by SCP-106, a human within the 10 to 25 years of age bracket will be prepped for recall with the compromised containment cell being replaced and restored for use. When the cell is ready, the lure subject will be injured, preferably via the breakage of a long bone, such as the femur, or the severing of a major tendon, such as the Achilles tendon. Lure subject will then be placed in the prepped cell, and the sound emitted by said subject will be transmitted over the site public address system. SCP-106 will typically begin to gravitate toward the lure subject within 10 to 15 minutes after hearing the subject. Should SCP-106 not respond to the initial broadcast, additional physical trauma is to be administered to the lure subject at 20 minute intervals until SCP-106 responds. Multiple lure subjects may be used in the case of major breach events.